no police on the road, and where there's always roadblocks and police. How long do you think you're going to stay as president? For as long as the people want me to stay. You've actually got a general on the television. You might not call it a coup, but it's a coup. Come on, this is our time. These are the first few minutes of a new presidency in Zimbabwe. That in itself is, is unusual for to seeing um, armored personnel carriers and fully armed soldiers taking up positions on street corners in Harare send every signal out to the world that this was something big happening here. I was filming secretively the APCs, armored personnel carriers on the roads, and I was thinking, oh, that's never happened before. Well, there might be something here. On the right-hand side is the APC in the bushes. Ah, oh, there it is. It's a tank. I still was very suspicious. I was thinking, no, no, I, I, you know, Mugabe is, he's been in here. He's been here before, and he's always, he's always come through it. It's that classic thing. You've actually got a general on the television. Comrade Araji Mugabe and his family are safe and sound, and their security is guaranteed. You might not call it a coup, but it's a coup. Within a day, it started to change. We are witnessing our second independence. And people began to say, well, hold on. Are we talking about the end here? Is this, is this it? And people then took to the street. We want to free and fair election. Jubilant celebrations. The army weren't doing anything. They weren't stopping people. Almost unheard of. We'll finally be able to say we're free. We're open. We've got, you know, look at us. We're all together. Blacks, whites unified together, that was the first time that I thought, hang on, there is change. Something is going to give here. And it looks like it's going to be Mugabe. It was quite emotional for me just to be part of, of this. And I pulled my camera out and I thought, no, I'm going to capture this. I can deal with the consequences. And I captured these moments of people desperate for change. Robert Mugabe had become a very controversial figure. Mr. He gave very few face-to-face -face interviews. About a decade ago, we were fortunate enough to be able to interview him. Why are you still having to point up differences between blacks and whites? Because the, the whites are still are contemptuous, are still racist, and uh, we don't want that in our society. What really struck all of us who were there was his absolute conviction that w what he was doing was right and that um, it was outside forces that had been against the uh, country, against him and against black people. And I remember our, um, our producer saying, Mr. President, do you mind if we have a photo with you? And I remember all of us lining up thinking, this is incredible. There's a photo of me clipping on a lapel mic onto President Mugabe's uh, tie and thinking, oh my word, I can't believe I'm actually touching this bloke. And he wasn't scared of a foreign journalist, he didn't give a damn. How long do you think you're going to stay as, as president? For as long as the people want me to stay, uh, but not for eternity, of course. The state had become a violent, torturing, nasty organisation with Robert Mugabe at its, at, at its head until in the end they decided enough's enough. Zimbabwe never thought it, but perhaps they should thank Grace, because she definitely brought about the end. Grace McCarvey cut quite a figure, and she was attracted to what being married to the president uh, could bring. She began to surround herself with people who were close to Mugabe, and she wanted to have her own potential place as the vice president and then a future president. Emerson Menegragua was his deputy. Eventually, he realized he had been taken out of office. Grace, of course, would have been involved in this. 
At this stage also, the spending, you know, Gucci Grace, as she was called, was, was sort of out of control. This sort of ostentatious lifestyle was seriously beginning to irritate senior members who weren't part of her clique, including the military. The sacking of Managagua, who was fundamentally supported by the military, was the end for Robert Mugabe. Breaking news tonight! Robert Mugabe! The streets filled with people thinking, this is the new change, this is actually it. President Robert Mugabe, thank you for your time and say bye-bye. This is our time. We are really we happy. happy. But I had to be here to witness a true revolution, and it's a great change. To young people like us, we've only known the rule of Robert Mugabe ever since we were born, and this means more jobs, more opportunities. We want a new leader who doesn't make the same mistakes. New people, new government. It was incredible. We were absolutely mobbed. People were in such a celebratory mood. And I tell you, it was the most euphoric moment that I've ever experienced in my Zimbabwe filming experiences. I can't believe it. It's happening. I can't believe we are free. Thank you, Jesus. The feeling on the streets where things are going to get better. This is the dawn of a new era now. We just hope that the transitional government will be all inclusive. We want to go back in the Commonwealth. We want our economy to be like other countries. We want to be a first world nation. Hysterical exaltation that this was the beginning of a new Zimbabwe and that it was a new change was going to happen. <laughs> There was a sense that the inauguration would take place and that this would be hugely significant. It was like going to sort of like a cup final. You could hear the stadium. People from all over were just converging on the stadium. They were loving it, absolutely loving it. Loving the fact that we were there. I love you. I love you. The fact that we were in an open uh, filming, that we weren't in any danger, we were walking past police and talking to the police, Media section. getting directions for which way we should go to get into the stadium. There was hoping for the sense of a new change, certainly the people are amazing. We all decided to go up the steps to have a look at what it was like. Wow. Reaction when we would just wave at people and the whole fans would wave back. They were clearly just proud to be there. And I was too, I have to say, I was somewhat moved. <laughs> Finally walking into the football field and just looking at this and thinking, oh, I never thought this would happen. I never thought that I would see this, where Robert Mugabe has stood down and that a new president is being sworn in. saying, oh, this is a new change, a new Zimbabwe. Great, fantastic music being played. Fantastic military bands. Nothing like we'd ever have in the UK. And people chanting and singing revolutionary songs. Then Managago walked in. It was utter hysteria. It was like, this is the new beginning and this is the guy. I couldn't believe how close I could get to the newly appointed president. It was just amazing. And in that very African way, which is lovely, you could actually be standing, you know, just next to him. I think I was, you know, I was t virtually touching the podium um, as he was being sworn in. Zimbabwe has itself a new president. He looks very happy, very pleased. The question is, will these huge crowds be pleased as well in the future? Will it bring about major political change? There's an awful lot of people who are very, very doubtful, but these are the first few minutes of a new presidency in Zimbabwe. The reaction from everyone who was watching was a mixture of, of laughter and tears. 
I remember having a monopod, which is a long pole, my camera attached to me, and I was literally leaning it over his head, thinking, wow, I'm living history. I'm being part of this most incredible historic moment. A coup that's taken place. You've got the new president sitting down, and on either side, there's ranks and ranks of soldiers, all basically paying their respects and showing exactly where, whose support he has. When the head of the police came, and the whole stadium booed, and it was amazing. You couldn't hear anything being said between them now when they were things. It was utterly drowned out. They couldn't have done it a short while ago. They couldn't have booed the head of the police without retribution being swift. And it really was that one moment you thought, wow, is it possible this has changed? Certainly it's changed enough for them to do this, and maybe there is a big change uh, coming. There was a 21-gun salute when Manangagwa marched along inspecting the troops. I was sprinting around in between these troops and having the most incredible access. There's a sense that there's just a chance that there could be change. Everyone wanted to talk. And new things will come in our country. Everyone wanted to say that there is going to be change, that this is a new beginning. Zimbabwe is a new country. Yeah. It's a new freedom. And I hope everything is going to change. Yeah. Things did happen that surprised me in a positive way. And they're saying that there will be elections in accordance with the Constitution. I suspect they will take place. But what strictures will be put in place to make sure they are free and fair? Mugabe brought with him this historic issues for years and years. His one dictator has gone. Perhaps he's been replaced by a dictator light. I don't want to be pessimistic about this, but the initial noises, the personnel, what's happened, how things have moved, doesn't bode awfully well, but we could be proved wrong.